So how's it going today, guys? I'm super grateful that all of you are still tuning in. Um, this will be our third episode now. And, um, you know, honestly, this is going far better than I expected at the beginning. I expected to get on this microphone and stutter a lot and not really know what to talk about. And um, that's kind of one of those things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a story of God doing wonders in my life and me not even realizing that those things were happening. And I feel that this happens to a lot of us. And, um, you know, the you get the old saying, hindsight's twenty twenty, And it's the same with reflection in life. Um, you know, God was working behind the scenes in my life long before I was working for myself. And I think what happened and what the catalyst was in my life was that when I finally started to meet God halfway, that's when shit started to get really good. Um, and a lot of us just expect God to do all these things for us in our life, right? Like we're just praying and relying on him to change everything. And it's not how it works, man. Like you have to take action yourself. You know, God's going to meet us halfway and he's going to expect us to deliver on the other half. Um, and there's this saying in life too, that, that I always go back to, and it's a uh, luck tends to bet on the people in motion. And I think that rings true for everything in life. You know, when you're doing the right things, when you're actually trying to change, when you're trying to make those adjustments, you know, those things seem to fall into place eventually. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today with this story. And, uh, this story relates to my addiction, um, and I think we briefly talked about it in one of the previous episodes, but I uh, got addicted to heroin when I was 17. Um, I went to jail five separate times. It was a very rough time in my life. And um, frankly, there was times where I didn't even know if I was going to get through it. And um, there were so many times where I tried to stop, so many times where you know I tried to take it all in control on my own. And I just could never really figure it out by myself. And I think that's where divine intervention came in in my story. Um, so one night I was shooting up heroin in a gas station bathroom. I was mixing it with crystal methamphetamine, which if anybody listening knows, it's a deadly combination if mixed in the wrong way. Um, and I was in the bathroom at the gas station and ended up shooting too much crystal meth and started convulsing and having a seizure. And when that happens, you have no control of your body. You pretty much have no control of your mind either. It's like, you are from an outside perspective watching yourself die um if that makes sense and and it's very defeating and you don't know what to do um so it happened that night i remember it like it was yesterday it was 2 a.m um, i had pulled into a gas station to get some gas and i decided to go into the bathroom and do a shot um, because i didn't feel like doing it in my car and i just felt like i would get better light in the bathroom honestly and um walked in there, shot off and started having the convulsions. And as I was convulsing, I was falling to the ground. And as I was falling to the ground, I hit my head on the toilet in the bathroom and it just jarred me awake. Like it almost felt like somebody just punched me in the face and woke me up um, because I was in this moment where I couldn't control my body. I couldn't control my mind or anything. And it almost felt like this supernatural being or supernatural force lifted me by the chin and made me look up at the top of the toilet. And on the back of the toilet was a pamphlet that said, your ticket to heaven. And I opened that pamphlet and I read through it that night. And it was weird because as soon as I opened the pamphlet, the convulsion stopped. And it was almost like an overdose was happening. But as soon as I opened the pamphlet, it stopped. Um, and I didn't really understand that at the time, right? Like I just found this pamphlet and I'm like, oh man, you know, this must be a sign. Like, you know, I always had faith growing up, but I never had, I never practiced the faith, right? Like I just knew that it existed. And um, that pamphlet said, your ticket to heaven, you open it up and it talks about how all of us are given this gift and that no good works that we do are going to get us there. And uh, us getting to heaven is strictly based on the fact that we accept Jesus in our heart as our savior and we repent for our sins. And I still hadn't consciously done that in my life at that time. And finding that pamphlet really started to make me think about what I was doing in my life and the person I had let myself become. And up until that point, I was in victim mode. I blamed everyone else about every bad thing that happened in my life. I took no responsibility. 
Um, you know, it was my parents' fault because they raised me wrong. It was my friend's fault because they tempted me to do shit. I mean, you could have, you could have given me any excuse in the book and I would have taken it. But that night was different. That night I picked up that pamphlet and my life started to change. And I didn't even realize it started to change at that time. You know, it was like all of these things started to gradually happen as I made better choices. And that's why I go back to God meets us halfway when we actually make that decision and we actually want to change our life and we actually take those steps. Because that day I decided, man, maybe I don't need to do these hard drugs anymore. Maybe I can be better than this. And I remember the next day I called my mom I hadn't talked to my mom in a long time. She had basically like written me off in her life because frankly, I had just lost trust so many times, stealing jewelry from my parents' house, pawning it at pawn shops. Like there's countless things that I did that were just absolutely despicable actions. And um, I called her the next day and I begged her to let me come move into her house because I wanted to change my life. And um, I moved in with her for about a month. I slept on her couch and uh, she helped me keep clean for that first month. And um, after that, I went on to a stint of being clean for probably six months. Um, things started to fall into place for me. And, uh, you know, the, the actions that I was taking, I was loving the results. Um, my life was getting better and better. And uh, I happened to fall off the wagon uh, in the future at some point after that. But the whole reason I'm talking about this story is because these things in our life happen all the time. And most of us aren't even aware of when they're happening. You know, if you can have that awareness of the event happening and it being something that's for you and something that's supposed to wake you up and help you, and you can actually follow those signs, the results are going to be exponentially better than if you just ignore those things. I would really like to say that that was uh, the time that changed my life, but it wasn't. You know, it was it was a wake up call, definitely. But I still don't think I was ready to go all in on being different. You know, I still had that level of comfort in being a fuck up. And I didn't want to feel the pressure of success because I had felt that pressure in the past when I was a baseball player. You know, my, my parents, all they ever wanted me to do was play pro baseball. And that was my whole life growing up. You know, I had scholarships to D1 schools and everything. And um, I remember that pressure. And I, I would say I put a lot of that pressure on myself. But when you're a kid, you don't even realize you're doing that. So, I still started to get my life together, but I didn't go all in on it. And I still relapsed and went back. Um, I still relapsed and got back on heroin. I still started hanging around with the wrong people again. Um, but it, when I reflected back, it was a point in my life where things started to change in my mindset. And I think that's the most important part to this, right? Because we don't change unless our thinking changes. And I think that's crucial. And a lot of people don't understand that. It's not like you just wake up one day and you do different things. Like you don't just change the action. You lay the framework by changing your thoughts over time. And then the actions naturally change as a byproduct of changing your thought process. So something happened years later that was an event that was very similar to this. Um, it was, this happened when I was 20 years old. So this was uh, at, the, at the end of my addiction. I got clean when I was 22. And when I was 25, I had started to get my life together. Um, I was working, building a career. Uh, I had a wife. Uh, she was pregnant. And I mean, my life was getting really good. You know, I was getting to the point where I started to love myself. Um, you know, but I still wasn't all in. And I think, at least for me in my life, God gives me signs when he knows that I'm not doing what I know I should be doing. Um, a lot of us have these things in our life where we should be doing certain things and we know it at heart, but comfort is easier than that change, right? So I was choosing comfort at that time. And uh, I remember I was at a park actually when I found this second note that was very similar. I was working out with friends at a park and I hadn't worked out in a long time and I knew I needed to get back in the gym. So I forced myself to go out there and these guys were working out every single day. So like these guys were running circles around me. Like I worked out to the point where I got sick and um, I went into the bathroom at that park and I was super sick. So I started throwing up in the bathroom and when I finally felt okay to walk out of the bathroom, I realized that there was a note on top of the toilet. And as soon as I saw that note, the first thing that popped into my head is, 
why am I finding this note? And I didn't think that the first time, right? Because I didn't have that awareness I was lacking there in that department. So when I found this note, the first thought was, what's the purpose of this, right? So opened it up and it was a different type of note, similar concept, but the note said, are you living your life fully before your time expires? And I thought I was until I found that note that day. And when I found that note, I started to really ask myself some important questions that I hadn't been at this point. And I think that's one thing that if anyone takes anything away from the story that I'm talking about here, it should be to start asking yourself the questions, right? And not a lot of us do that, right? Like we just expect different results and, you know, most of us don't even know what we want. And I think that's extremely important in achieving any goals that you set or uh, just advancing in life or anything like that. I mean, you have to start asking yourself those questions like, what do I want? Who am I? What kind of impact do I want to make on the world? What kind of career do I want? Do I want a family? Do I want X, Y, and Z? And, you know, a lot of us don't even know that. We just go through life and just expect things to work out when it doesn't work like that, man. So I found that note and I started to ask myself those questions and... I realized that I wasn't doing everything that I wanted to do. Um, I was working in a business at the time where I didn't have authority. I couldn't make decisions. You know, I felt like a robot and I knew I had ideas that I wanted to implement and I wasn't doing that. And I guess part of the disconnect in my life was that I was telling myself I was doing the things that I wanted to be doing, but I wasn't being true to myself. And I find that a lot with people I talk to today. You know, it's very hard to have that self-awareness and that, and that radical honesty with ourselves um, because it's uncomfortable at times, man. And sometimes you have to stop doing something you've been doing for 20 years or sometimes you have to start doing something that you don't even know if you can do. And that's where being uncomfortable comes in and being uncomfortable has been the main thing in my life that has driven the growth that I've experienced. So that day I decided that I was going to start to change my life and actually do the things that I wanted to do. And I was going to start to take control and I was going to make decisions and I was going to put myself in positions that I wanted to be in and not wait for somebody to tell me it was okay. You know, I was always the person in life that was waiting on somebody to push me or waiting on somebody to come around and show me how to do it. And, you know, it never worked out because it's not, it's not how life works, man. Nobody comes around and just tells you how to do these things. Nobody holds your hand and walks you through the path. It doesn't work like that, man. We have to go that path alone with God, with us. And I was afraid to do that up until that point. And the whole reason I'm even talking about this is because I moved houses um, three weeks ago and I was going through uh, a dresser that was in my guest room. And I found that note that I found three years ago. And I just started bawling, crying because it all came back to me. And I started to reflect on my life. And even at that time, even though I said like, hey, I'm going to change everything, like I'm making this decision now, you know, I still wavered and went back and forth. And when I reflect back on the past three years, I noticed how that moment in my life of finding the note was such a pivotal time where God started to work wonders in my life beyond what I could have understood at that time. And I think before that, I just wasn't open to receiving those things. And that's why I never did. Um, And I was frankly living my life for myself. Like I was very selfish. You know, I I had screwed my life up so much and I felt like, oh man, like I have to build my life up. You know, I want to feel good about myself and like I'm doing all this stuff for myself. And now my perspective is far different on that. You know, I feel like I am really only here today because I should have overdosed so many times. I mean, there's times where I ran my car into a tree head on and I should have died. Um, But why didn't I? And that's the question I started to ask myself after I found that pamphlet. And through those three years up until now, I really realized that I'm here because I have a responsibility to the people that don't hear the things that I talk about. And the only reason I know the things that I talk about is because God has thrown me in the fire on purpose. And I truly believe that. I truly believe that God will throw you in the fire to prepare you for something that you don't even know how great it's going to be. And I'm living that life today. um, And it's incredible. I mean, there's no way I would be able to handle the success that I've had to this point if I didn't go through all of those trials. At the time, I didn't view it that way, right? Like at the time, it was like, man, why is this happening to me? You know, such a victim mentality. 
And if I can encourage anyone today, it's really to just throw the victim mentality out the window and realize that the things that are happening in your life, even if they are extremely challenging, are happening for you. Even if there's something that you think like, how could this benefit me? Like, take a step back, look at the bigger picture and really ask yourself like, what is this preparing me for? And I wasn't asking myself those questions at that time. I do now. And now that I look back and I see it, I'm like, wow, that's exactly what this was. It was preparing me for what I am today. 